Hey there, Brittany Ann from Equipping Godly Women here, and today I want to talk to you about how you can make time for God, no matter how busy your life is right now. You see, I get emails from people all the time who tell me, we want to read our Bible, we want to make time for God, we want to make God more of a priority, but we're just so busy between work and school and family and just life stuff that we don't have the time, or we do have the time, but for whatever reason, we're just not using it on the things that we know we should. We know we should read our Bible. We know we should pray. We know we should spend time with God and we want to, but when it comes time to actually do these things, for whatever reason, it doesn't happen. Does that sound familiar at all? I'm guessing that for a lot of you, it does. But the good news is today I have a bunch of really helpful tips that are going to help you make time for God no matter how busy you are, what you have going on, these tips will help. So definitely stay tuned. All right, so let's go ahead and dive right in to tip number one. If you want to make time for God, the very first thing that I need you to do is decide right now that making time for God is a priority in your life. The truth is there are a hundred million things that you could focus on right now. You could work on losing weight. You could work on eating healthier. You could work on being a better mom. You could work on being a better wife. You could work on fixing up your house. You could work on spending less and saving more. And all of these different things that we all want to do and know we should do, but realistically you can't do all the things. You have to decide which thing in your life deserves to be your number one priority right now. The truth is, as Christians, if you want a strong faith, you have to work for it. And I know, as Christians, we are totally allergic to the idea of work. But let me be clear, I am not talking about working for your salvation. Salvation is a free gift, yes, we got that. But I'm talking about your faith that you have afterwards. What kind of Christian are you? How strong is your faith? How devoted are you to God? The truth is, it's just like any other relationship in your life. Nobody wakes up in the morning, rolls out of bed, and magically has an awesome relationship with their spouse. Nobody goes to bed one night, wakes up in the morning, and magically is this amazing parent. If you want to lose weight, you don't just lay around on the couch and hope that someday you will take a nap, wake up, and ah, there's your wonderful body you have been waiting for your whole life. It doesn't work that way in any other area of your life, and it doesn't work that way in your faith either. If you want a strong faith, it absolutely takes time and discipline to get there. That's why there are spiritual disciplines. They're there for a reason so that you can use them to grow your faith just the same way that you would grow a muscle. And that takes time. So don't wait around and think, oh yeah, I should do that. Oh yeah, I want to do that maybe someday and hope it's going to magically appear. You have got to start by number one, deciding this is a priority. You are going to work at it and it is going to take time and effort. And honestly, if you are not at the point where you are willing to say, yes, God, I am all in. This is the most important thing in my life and I am willing to do the effort that it takes you might as well stop listening right now. And I hate to say that because of course I want you here and I want you to listen, but the truth is whatever you learn, God will hold you accountable for. So the more knowledge that you are putting into your head and not acting on, you're just listening to it, that's actually worse for you because now you have this that you will be accountable for. So if you are not ready to put in the work, if you are just listening just to listen, um, then you might as well go listen to something else, honestly. But if you are at the point where you say, you know what, I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know what it's going to look like. And I know it's going to be hard, but you know what? My faith is important to me. I am ready to decide right now that I'm going to put in the work that it takes. I am going to find the time to do these spiritual disciplines that I know I need to do to grow my faith muscle. If you are ready to do those things, absolutely keep watching because this video is going to help you do just that. All right, hopefully if you are still here, you have decided 
that you are ready to make your faith your number one priority, which means we are ready for step number two, and that is figuring out how you're going to do that. Because the truth is we are still humans at the end of the day. We are limited to our 24 hours we have in a day, and we have to use a lot of that time for things like eating and sleeping, taking care of our families, or going to work. Whatever kinds of things that you have going on, you can't just dump them and go live on a mountain in a hut somewhere where you just read the Bible all day with no distractions. It's not realistic. Nobody's going to do that. I mean, unless God's calling you to that, by all means. But for most of us, it really is going to be figuring out how we can create a life that's centered around God and his word in the midst of all the busyness that we have going on and finding something that is really sustainable. So I actually created a free resource to help you with exactly that. It is called the Quiet Time Planning Guide, and you can download it for free on my website. When you do, I will send you a free printable workbook where you just go through basically and answer the questions, and it will walk you step by step through exactly what the perfect quiet time looks like for you in this season. Because the truth is what works really well for me may not be what works really well for you, or what worked really well for you five years ago may not be what works really well for you now. What each of us needs is going to be a little bit different and it's going to vary based on things like our personality, our family schedules, um, what if we're morning people or night people and all these other factors, but you can make a plan in advance that will work for you. I actually sat down and did this a couple of years ago and it was so helpful because before I had been saying, oh yeah, I wanna read the Bible, I'll get around to it. But when you say, I'll get around to it, basically what you're saying is, I want to do it, but I don't want to do it now. I'm not going to make it a priority. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it off. But if you're putting it off now, what's stopping you from putting it off the next time and the next time and the next time? And that's what I was doing. Even though I was a Christian, even though I'd read through my Bible before, and even though I am a Christian blogger, so I should be held to a higher standard, I honestly found myself procrastinating way more than I wanted to. So I sat down and this is what changed everything for me. I sat down and I decided, okay, here's my plan. Here's exactly when I'm going to read my Bible. Here's how long I'm going to spend. Here's what that's going to look like. And I planned it out and I made a commitment to myself in advance. And if you were on the Equipping Godly Women email list back then, um, I emailed you and told you about it too. I said, you know, this is what I'm doing. This is what it's going to look like. I am committing to myself and to you. And here's my plan. So since that time, I haven't done it completely perfectly. I am human just like you, but I have been doing way, way better because I have a plan. I have a set time of day that I have set aside specifically for that purpose. So for me, that means eight o'clock in the morning. It's not super early, so I don't have to drag myself out of bed, but it's also not later in the day where it's more likely to get pushed aside or where I'm going to be too tired and not feel like it. At 8 a.m., I've already taken my oldest kids to school, so they're out of the house, and it's just me and my littlest one at home. The house is quiet, I haven't started work yet, I don't have very much else going on at that time. I'm awake, I'm alert, I eat breakfast, so it was a really good idea for me to sit with my breakfast, because that's something I'm going to do every day, and to pair that with my Bible reading, and to make it a habit that way, and that worked really well for me. But you need to find what's going to work the best for you. So go ahead and download this free quiet time planning guide. If you haven't already, I will link it in the show notes, and it will walk you through just really practically speaking, when is a good time to read your Bible? Because once you have a plan, I am telling you it is so much easier. Because it's not, I'm gonna do it later, I'm gonna get around to it. It's okay, it's that time on the clock, I know I'm going to do this, and then you just go do it. So go download that if you haven't already and then hop right back over here so we can continue on with tip number three. All right, tip number three is to make God an integral part of your day. And what I mean by that is that while I am a huge proponent of setting aside an actual chunk or block of time in the day for God to spend time with him without distractions, I don't want you to fall in the habit where you set that time aside for God and then the rest of the day has nothing to do with God at all. Don't put God in this little box of your day. The truth is God deserves all of your day. And that's gonna look different at 
8 a.m. as it is in 2 in the afternoon as it is at 9 at night, and that's fine. Obviously, you can't just sit and read your Bible all day, but I do want you to be involved with God throughout the entire day. So practically speaking, when you are working, taking care of kids, doing the dishes, what does that look like? Well, for me, a few things that I have found really helpful are just to have reminders around my house so that as I'm going about my day-to-day -day life, that I can still be praying as I am doing things, I can still be meditating on scripture, and I can still be doing my best to live as a godly wife and mom. So for example, I might listen to a Christian radio station on Pandora while I'm cooking dinner. I'm still taking care of my family and doing the things that I need to do, but I can also be worshiping God during that time and thinking about him and praying about him. Another idea is to take printable scripture cards and put them up around your house, especially if there's something in particular that you're really struggling with. Um, having a verse for that up where you're going to see it often, every time that you go by, you can think of that verse and it will be kind of a prompt and a reminder to meditate on that throughout the day. Um, and to meditate basically just means to think about it, think through it. How can you apply it to your life? You know, what implications does it have for the way that you're living your life? Um, so having those scripture cards up is super helpful as well. I do have a bunch of free ones on Equipping Godly Women. If you want to hop over there, there's a link in the show notes. Um, or if there's just a verse that's especially meaningful to you, you can write down your own as well. And I have definitely done this from time to time where I will look up a verse and write it on an index card and just tape it up on the wall where I'm going to see it often. Other things you can do are um, talking to friends and family, texting a good godly girlfriend throughout the day to say, hey, how's it going? I know that you're struggling with this. How are you doing with that? And just checking in um, and having that relationship with them where you're talking with each other and being real and open and honest and vulnerable and saying, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm struggling with. You know, sending each other scriptures or just nice notes of encouragement throughout the day is really awesome as well. There are tons of different things that you can do. It really is just a matter of getting creative and kind of trying to keep your mind on God throughout the day. Obviously, sometimes you will have to think about other things. That's understood. But as much as you can, when you have that little bit of free brain space that you are thinking about God and worshiping him and talking to him and thinking about how you can better live up to your calling. Now, of course, I know that might seem kind of obsessive and crazy, but is it really? If you think back to when you and your husband, if you're married, if you think back to when you started dating, didn't you think about your husband all the time? Didn't you spend every spare moment just thinking about him and the time you'd spent together and how excited you were for the time you would spend with him? That's totally normal to do for a person in your life. You can do that same thing with God too, where you're spending that brain space on him. Or alternately, how much of your brain space do you spend worrying about things? If you are constantly worried about money or worried about your kids, then you are already using that brain space throughout the day obsessing anyway. You might as well turn it around, stop the worrying by worshiping God instead. So really, it's just making it a part of your life, a part of who you are. All right, so tip number four, I want you to take a minute and evaluate where you are at currently. And by this, I mean, if you're not where you want to be in your faith, and honestly, most of us aren't, or you wouldn't be here, um, but if you're not where you want to be, what things are holding you back? What is getting in the way? Because it's one thing to really press on towards the goal and to want to grow, but if you still have these obstacles or these hindrances, you have to get them out before you can go ahead and grow. It'd be tr like trying to weight lift when you still have an injury. You have to take care of some of these things first in order to be able to move forward. So what are the things in your life that are holding you back right now? Maybe they come to mind right away or maybe you need to pause this for a minute so that you can sit and prayerfully think about it or maybe set aside some time in a little bit. But what are the things that are really holding you back? What are the things that you are worried about? What are the things that you are obsessing over? What are the things that you're spending a lot of time and mental energy on? 
Or alternately, what are the things that are getting a lot of your money right now? And does that match up with your priorities? Um, just to give a couple examples, if your husband comes home and he says, hey, let's go get pizza, and you're like, yeah, I love pizza, you know, awesome, and you have no problem throwing down $20, $30, or whatever it takes to feed your family um, for pizza, and you don't even think twice about that, but then somebody says, oh, hey, there's, you know, kids starving and all these other missions that would be awesome to support, and they're like, can we have 20 bucks? And you're like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of broke right now. And I mean, obviously there are limits, but what kinds of things are you spending your money on without thinking about it? You don't even have to think twice, like, yes, take my money, like, I want these things. And then what kinds of things do you hesitate and you don't like spending your money on? Just like how you feel in your heart when you're spending things. Um, when your kids want things, are you totally like, yes, have my money, take the things. I want my kids to have all of the experiences. They need all these things. Um, I want to buy them tons of Christmas presents and birthday presents galore. And those kinds of things are really easy for you to spend money on. But when it comes to other things, it's just asking yourself, where's your time going? Where's your money going? What are you worrying about? What sins do you still have in your life that God has told you, hey, that's a sin. You need to deal with it, but you haven't dealt with it yet. What conversations is God asking you to have that you have been putting off? What behaviors are you doing that you know you shouldn't be doing and you're disobeying? What behaviors should you be doing that you're procrastinating, which is also disobeying? Um, just taking a minute and really prayerfully saying, God, I know I'm not perfect. You know, search me, know my heart, point out to me, show me, because I want to change. I want to be all in. I want to live this life. I want to go forward. I want nothing more. What is getting in my way? And he will be so faithful to you when you get to the point where you're ready to address it. Because honestly, if you are living in persistent sin, if you are saying, you know, I know God says this, but I don't care. I'm going to do it my way then why would he tell you if you're not going to listen? So it's really humbling your heart and getting really honest before God and saying, God, what is holding me back? What is going on in my life that is keeping me from you? Um, what do I need to give up? And it reminds me of the rich young ruler. If you remember him in the Bible, he came to Jesus and he said, Jesus, I want to follow you. And Jesus said, okay, go sell everything you have. And he went away sad and he didn't do it because for him, his money and his possessions meant more than being with Jesus. And every single one of us has something in our lives just like that right now. What is God asking you to give up that you are unwilling to give up? Is God saying, hey, I know that you work a lot. Maybe you need to switch jobs or find a way to cut back a little bit because you're going full steam ahead and I want you to rest in me. Or maybe God says, you know, you probably don't need to be watching all these trashy TV shows that you're watching that really are filling your mind with junk. And you need to spend that time getting in my word and spending time with me. Or maybe you need to let go of that relationship, whether it's a friend or whoever in your life that you are in a relationship with somebody who is bringing negativity and hurt and harm and sin into your life. And you just need to let that go. And yes, it's a sacrifice, but how could you not sacrifice for God when he sacrificed his entire life for you? And I don't mean to lay on the guilt trip at all, but if you just think about it, is it any kind of sacrifice in light of what he has done and in light of everything he has promised us? Why wouldn't you and why wouldn't I, I'm in this exact same, but why wouldn't we give up everything and do it his way, trusting that he is God of the universe? He knows what he's talking about. And if he's asking you to give something up so that you have time for him, that's not a sacrifice at all. I mean, no matter what it is, you're trading it for time with God of the entire universe. That's not a trade. Like, it's a no-brainer. So, yeah, let's do that. Yes, let's do that. Let's be in the Word. And whatever it is that's getting in your way, let's just get rid of it. The Bible says if you have a hand that's causing you to sin, cut it off. Um, recently in my own life, I deleted Instagram off of my phone, which is something that I knew that I really should do. Not that Instagram is terrible or horrible, but I could very easily just sit there and scroll on Instagram for an hour at night. And I'm like, you know, I'm spending more time on Instagram filling my mind with this, even though I mostly followed Christian accounts. Um, I'm filling more of my mind with Instagram than I am with the word. And I don't want that kind of life. I don't want a life that's full of all this other stuff. And I'm just going to get rid of it because it's it's not even, you don't have to think about it. That's not a trade like Instagram for God. Um, no question. So what kinds of things are going on in your life right now? 
what is getting in your way? What do you need to get rid of? What do you need to cut out? What do you need to stop doing that is holding you back? Take some time and really think through that and pray through that. And my prayer for you is just that God would reveal it to you and that he would give you the courage to do something about it, even though it might be really hard because God does call us to really hard things. He really does. But it's so worth it on the other side, you guys. I've given up stuff. I've done things I didn't want to do. I've stopped doing things I didn't want to stop. And every single time on the other side, it is hard and it takes courage. But it is so worth it to trade whatever our garbage for God. That's not even a trade. Like, how could you not? All right, moving right along to tip number five. This one is a little bit different because it's not actually going to make more time in your life. But if you do this, it will make making time for God a whole lot easier. So basically what I want you to do is find ways to surround yourself with other godly influences. And what I mean by that is make sure you are going to church if at all possible. I know for some people that's not realistic, but for most of us, you can get there. You can find a way. Make sure you're going to church. Make sure you're reading your Bible. Make sure that you have friends who are Christian. If you do not have friends who are Christian, you need to go out and find some. That sounds kind of awkward to say, but it's the truth. You need to go out and find some people who are Christian to be friends with. I have an article on my blog. I'll link that in the notes as well. But also, listen to Christian YouTube channels, uh, read Christian blogs, watch Christian movies, whatever it takes to kind of surround yourself in this culture of Christianity. Um, because the Bible tells us that what we put into ourselves is what comes out of ourselves. It says it way better than that. But um, what we put in is what's going to come out. And there is a quote that I read by Jim Rohn years ago that has always stuck with me. And it says, that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And after I read that, I really went back to evaluate my own life. Like who are my five people that I'm spending all of my time with or the majority of my time with? Who are the five people who are influencing my life the most? And are those people that I want to be like? And thankfully for me, they were. Um, but I'm even at the point where I want to actually go make some new friends. Like I love my current friends. So I'm not replacing them. But I want to bring even more people in my life who are doing this thing, who are farther along than me, who are like, yes, Christianity, we are all in. Because what you surround yourself with is your normal. So if you are surrounding yourself with people who don't make God a priority, you're not going to make God a priority, very likely. But if you are surrounding yourself with people who are just energetic and passionate and on fire for God, you are way more likely to be that way yourself. So I'm not saying go get rid of all of your friends. Don't do that unless they're terrible, horrible people. That's a whole different blog video. But make sure that you have those influences, that perspective, that encouragement, and that inspiration in your life in whatever capacity, because that's going to be your normal. And personally, I don't want my normal to be lukewarm Christianity. I don't want my normal to be, yes, we go to church on Sunday and we say we love Jesus, but the entire rest of the week, you would never know. And I'm not saying my friends are like that at all because they're not, but I want a faith that is just on fire for God and passionate and so in love with God that it totally pours out of you in everything that you do. Um, and I want to be around people like that too, because that's going to have an influence on me as well. So just an encouragement that if you are not around people who are very passionate, find some people um, and create that kind of culture around yourself because that's going to be really helpful for you as well. All right, and that leads me to tip number six, our last one of the day, but one I definitely want to mention, and that is to keep your expectations reasonable. You see, I totally understand that each of us has our own schedule. Some of us are really busy. Some of us are not busy at all. Some of us have health issues while others don't at all. Some of us have very small children who don't sleep through the night. Others have demanding jobs. Everyone's life is a little bit different. So there's really no one size fits all standard. And if you look in the Bible for what it says how often or how much you should read your Bible, it's not in there. So we're not going to get all pharisaical. We are not going to say you must do this this many minutes a day. That's not what we're going for at all. It really just comes down to your heart. How are you spending the time that you do have? Are you getting in the Bible as much is as reasonable for you? Or 
isn't the bottom of your to-do list and you honestly don't care. And that's something that's between you and God. And you and God just need to decide together what is reasonable for you in this season. If you have little ones who don't sleep through the night, your life is going to look a lot different than if you are an empty nester. And that's fine. God's not calling you to someone else's standard. God is not calling you to do the same thing as anyone else. God is calling you to love him and put him first and make time for him in whatever capacity you have. So God is the one who gave you these children. God is the one who gave you this job or whatever you have. And he knows that you have them. So the last thing I want to leave you with is don't beat yourself up if you are busy, but do the best that you can. And you know what that best is in the season that you are at in your life right now. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many minutes you spent. It doesn't matter how many times a week. It doesn't matter how many Bible verses you can quote. What matters is that you have a heart that loves God, that wants to be with him, that wants to be with him as much as possible. And if you are not at that point right now, then you're finding ways to get to that point. And it's okay because honestly, we're human. Not every single one of us, not any of us, is gonna wanna spend time with God every minute of every day. We are fallen sinful creatures and myself included. This morning, I was like, I don't really feel like, but it's being disciplined and it's getting in there and it's doing that work that I was talking about to build those habits and to make time, even when you don't feel like you have the time, that you're taking those steps to make it a priority and that you're doing the best that you can and you're getting honest before God and you're saying, God, am I giving you my best? Is this enough? Or am I just giving you my leftovers? So that's the thought I want to leave you with today. Are you giving God your best? Are you doing the best that you can? Or are you giving God your leftovers? Because God knows what you're doing. You know what you're doing. And if you don't know, go talk to God because he will tell you what you're doing. But when you get to the place where you say, God, I am all in. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to do this. I am in. Let's do this. It is an exciting place to be. And that's when your whole life changes. So if you are ready to dive in, if you loved listening to this, if you're feeling inspired, encouraged, and you want to go do all the things, um, then yes, let's go do all the things. Go read your Bible if you haven't read your Bible yet. I mentioned lots of resources throughout this video. Um, go check out the show notes because I have links to all of them. If you need more godly encouragement in your life, definitely, definitely subscribe to this channel um, so that you can come back and listen to more videos from me because I will absolutely challenge you and encourage you and kick your butt when I need to because we all need that sometimes. But I'm gonna bring you so many helpful suggestions and inspiration to help you run your race well. So go out, make an awesome rest of the day, spend some time with God, and I hope to see you back here again soon. Bye!